<coughs> Hello viewers, <coughs> welcome to my channel. Uh, today's topic is uh, squamous cell carcinoma. Uh, but before starting this topic, I would like to request you to like, subscribe and share these videos to support this channel. And if you need more information about any disease or any medical condition, in that case you can visit my website which is www.diseasesintreatment.com and the link for my website is just below this video in the description area so you can click that link to visit the website and now we come to a topic what is the squamous cell carcinoma squamous cell cancer you know which is known as scc you know and the alternative is uh, alternative name is uh, squamous cell carcinoma and it's a type of uh, the skin cancer and uh, it begins in the squamous cells and uh, the squamous cells are the thin and the flat cells uh, that make up the epidermis, you know, or the which is the outermost layer of the skin, you know. And the skin uh, squamous cell carcinoma is uh, caused by the changes in the DNA of these cells, you know, which cause them to multiply uncontrollably which causes the squamous cell carcinoma. You know. Now, you know, the squamous cell carcinoma is the second most common form of skin cancer. And, the, you know, and the people with the squamous cell carcinoma uh, often develop scaly uh, red patches, or open sores, or the warts, and uh, these abnormal growths can develop anywhere, but they are most often found uh, in the areas which are uh, most exposed to the ultraviolet radiation, you know, either from the sunlight or from uh, uh, like uh, tanning beds or lamps, you know. And the condition usually is not life-threatening, uh, but it can become dangerous if it goes uh, untreated, you know. And when the treatment is not received promptly, the growths can increase in size and spread to the other parts of the body, causing the serious complications. So it's very important they are detected at the early stage and uh, you get the treatment, you know, uh, before they can cause any complications. And, uh, you know, your skin has multiple layers, outermost uh, protective layers of the skin, is known as epidermis and uh, this epidermis is made up of uh, squamous cells basal cells and uh, melanocytes and these cells are constantly shedding to make uh, a way of for the fresh and the new skin cells you know when the certain genetic changes occur in the dna uh, of any of these cells you know the skin cancer can occur in that case you know and the main types of the skin cancer are the squamous cell carcinoma basal cell carcinoma and the malignant melanomas you know so these are the three major types of the uh, epidermal uh, skin cancer you know now the, the today's topic is about the squamous cell carcinoma you know the squamous cells are the cells uh, which are closest to the skin surface and uh, their purpose is to line the skin and uh, these cells, uh, these type of the cancers often develop on the areas which are exposed to the sunlight, you know, or the ultraviolet radiation, you know, like face or maybe hands and the ears, you know, and in some cases it can occur in other areas of the body. The next thing, uh, type of the cancer is the basal cell cancer. So the basal cells uh, sit below the squamous cells and uh, they are constantly dividing to form the new cells, you know. And the basal cell cancer is the most uh, common type of the skin cancer and the like uh, squamous cell cancer. Uh, it develops uh, on the areas which are exposed to the ultraviolet rays, particularly on the face and on the neck, you know. And this type of cancer uh, tends to grow slowly and it rarely spreads to other parts of the body. And if the basal cell cancer, if it goes untreated and undetected, you know, it can eventually spread to the bones and the other tissues, you know. So early detection again here, it's very important. Now the third one is the melanoma. 
So as you know, the melanocytes are located in the deepest section of the epidermis, you know. And these cells are responsible for producing melanin. So melanin is, uh, uh, is the pigment that gives uh, the color to the skin, you know. And when the cancer develops in the melanocytes, the condition is known as malignant uh, uh, melanoma. And the malignant melanoma is less common than the squamous cells and the basal cell cancers, but it is more likely to grow and spread when it's left untreated. Okay. Uh, now, the next thing is what are the symptoms of the squamous cell carcinoma? You know, it often occurs in the areas which are exposed to ultraviolet radiation, such as the face or the ear or the neck or the hands, you know. Uh, but it can also appear on the mouth, in the mouth or maybe in the anal area or on the genitals, you know. So, uh, in its uh, early stages, uh, squamous cell carcinoma often presents itself as a scaly and reddish patch. And as it progresses, it can turn into like raised bum that con uh, continues to grow, you know. And the growth may also cross and it may bleed, you know. And uh, in the mouth, uh, the cancer uh, will uh, uh, will take on uh, the appearance like the mouth ulcers or maybe the white patches, you know. In some cases, you will notice the new growths on uh, a pre-existing skull or pre-existing mole or pre-existing birthmarks, you know. So any existing lesions are the source that are not healing can indicate the squamous cell carcinoma. And uh, in that case, so if you feel a, a, any kind of disease symptoms, you know, you should consult your doctor uh, to, for the further evaluation, you know. The next thing is what are the causes of the squamous cell carcinoma, or squamous cell cancer, which is also known as SCC, you know. You know, it's caused by the mutations of uh, that occur in the DNA. So these changes cause the abnormal cells to multiply out of control. And when that this uh, uh, uncontrolled multiplication occurs, uh, the squamous cells, uh, it's known as uh, squamous cell carcinoma. You know. you know, the ultraviolet radiation is the most common cause of the DNA mutations that lead to the skin cancer. And ultraviolet uh, well, radiation is found in the sunlight as well as in the tanning beds or the tanning lamps, you know. And uh, the frequent exposure to the ultraviolet radiation greatly increases your risk of skin cancer. And the condition can also develop in people who don't spend much time in the sun or uh, uh, like uh, in the beds, you know, tanning, tanning beds, you know. And these people uh, may be genetically predisposed to the skin cancer or uh, they may have a weakened immune system that increases their likelihood of getting this type of cancer, you know. And uh, those who have received the radiation treatment for any other conditions, uh, they may be at greater risk of the skin cancer, you know. And the risk factors uh, include like uh, uh, having fair skin, having the light colored hair and the blue, green or the gray eyes, having light, uh, like uh, long term exposure to the ultraviolet radiation, uh, living in the sunny regions or uh, at the high altitudes, you know. And having a history of multiple severe burns, uh, sunburns, you know, or uh, especially if they occur uh, early in the life, you know, and having the history of being exposed to the chemicals such as uh, arsenic, etc., you know. The next thing is, well, how do the doctors diagnose that uh, someone has the squamous cell carcinoma? Well, your doctor will first perform the physical examination, I mean, the video examination, you know. So he will look at the growths, you know, and uh, uh, about their shape and their color, you know, and uh, uh, about the, the rate they are growing here. And they will also ask you about your medical history. And uh, your doctor may take a piece of, from those growths, you know, just to see under the microscope uh, if there is uh, any abnormal growth. I mean, are those cells are cancerous or they're non cancerous, you know. So this test is known as biopsy, you know. And this is an outdoor procedure, you don't need any hospitalization for this procedure. And biopsy usually involves uh, removing a very small portion of the affected skin. Okay. So it will help your doctor to diagnose if uh, uh, those uh, lesions or the growths or the cancers are the non cancerous. You know. Now, if they are cancerous, then uh, the question is what are the treatment options? Well, it depends on 
the results, you know, your general health and uh, uh, the doctor's findings, you know. And the treatment is based on uh, the extent and the severity of the cancer, the age, the general health and, uh, and the location of the cancer, you know. And if uh, this cancer is caught at the early stage, you know, uh, it usually can be successfully treated, you know. And uh, if it becomes harder, uh, you know, as so they grow more, you know, it becomes harder to cure once it spread from the skin to any other body part, you know. And there are many treatment options available, like uh, uh, in most microscopic surgery, you know, your doctor, or maybe like, uh, uh, you know, You know, there is, the treatment options may include uh, Mohs microscopic surgery, uh, electrosurgery, maybe excisional surgery, you know, or uh, maybe uh, cryosurgery, you know, or maybe like uh, radiation uses. Uh, like, uh, so these are the different treatment options. In case of the cryosurgery, your doctor uses a liquid nitrogen to freeze and destroy the cells, uh, those cancer cells, you know. And uh, electrosurgery is, uh, uh, which is also co called as curatage and uh, electro like uh, uh, dissect dissectation, you know, which involves the like spray scraping of the cancer and burning the skin to kill the cancer cells. And this process is typically uh, done more than once to ensure that uh, uh, the thorough treatment and the complete removal of the cancer. And some doctors may also use like uh, photodynamic therapy, uh, laser surgery, or maybe the topical medications to treat the squamous cell carcinoma. You know? Okay. And uh, well, the early detection is very important and is key to the successful treatment. And if it's detected early, it can be successfully treated, you know, uh, before it spreads to other part of the body. But if they have spread to other parts of the body, then the prognosis. Uh, uh, you know, it's not that good as compared to if it's detected at the early stage, you know. Thank you very much for watching this video. If you need more information about any disease, any medical condition, you can visit my website. Goodbye.